cards, please. Oh, I think that we played uh, a very good first half. Then uh, the, in the first part of the second half, uh, we, we went in trouble. We were passive in the defensive uh, phase. And so we considered the goal, uh, 10 minutes uh, of panic. Better in, uh, in the last part of the match uh, than in the, in the extra time. I think that uh, we was really tired after 60 match uh, to play 120 minutes is really very difficult. We, we were unlucky during the match because uh, we lost uh, Christensen, we lost uh, Loftus. Uh, so uh, we, we started uh, the match with three injuries and two, two injuries during the match. It's not easy, but uh, at the end, uh, we can play the final. Loftus cheek, is it a serious problem? No, not serious problem. Uh, but uh, he had uh, the, the usual cramp after okay. uh, 75 minutes. Maurizio, when we get to the penalties, how much preparation had you done for that phase of a match like this? Yeah, there is no preparation for penalties because uh, you can uh, kick very well uh, in the training ground but uh, then uh, the pressure is different so you you need uh, a great personality uh, a great character uh, so i think that uh, it's uh, really useless to try penalties uh, the goalkeeping question comes up of course did you look at kepa and think he's my man in a shootout no question <laughs> Oh, to be honest, uh, I didn't uh, look at the last two penalties, so I, I didn't know <laughs> if Kepa saved very well or not. So it's Arsenal, and a, a grand final, of course. How much will you look forward to that at the end of this season? And now we need uh, to rest. Unfortunately, we have to go to play in the uh, United States, because uh, I think that uh, in this moment uh, we need to rest. We need to rest, uh, and then uh, we have uh, 10 days to, to, to prepare uh, the final. Uh, we have to, re to recover uh, energy, because uh, we are really very tired. And I understand why, but thank you very much. <laughs> Ciao. Well, <done. laughs> okay. well smiles there from Rizio yeah. Sarri. A bit of concern, though, Glenn, about the, the injuries and tiredness mounting up for his squad, yeah. and I guess that explains why, why he brought off Loftus. That's right. Too. It's, that's given, I can rest now easy. I can understand why he's brought him off. But uh, it sounds like he's always got a slight problem with cramp. Uh, after 70 odd minutes it seems that's the reason why maybe you take him off so uh, with that knowledge I can understand why he took him off of course you couldn't take any risks but uh, I'd still like to see Parkley and uh, Loftus-Cheek in that in that middle in that midfield for them I, I must say but uh, it was nice to see him smile as well yeah. wasn't it it was good to see him smile he's a happy bunny I don't know what he was quite understanding about America I don't know what he was trying to say there whether they've got a, a commitment in America so, or a game plan yeah I don't, I can't see them going off to America now. They're in the final, yeah. surely not. But uh, anyway, they'll sort that out, I'm sure. But no, it's a good night for Chelsea Football Club and delighted for English uh, teams again. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm sure they can rejig things. If he does go on then and consolidate third place in the league, he's, he's in the final and then he lifts this trophy, does he deserve another season? Of course he does. Mm. I mean, he's been under pressure from, from, from day one. I think the sorry ball thing didn't really help whoever came up with that name, he said he had never really heard of it before, so they haven't really warmed to the idea, but he's done a terrific job. They're third in the Premier League, you know, with, with all the issues going on there, the, potentially their best player leaving Eden Hazard, a new manager with a different style from Conte, potentially to get into the Champions League or be in the Champions League and then to win a European title. He's a great achievement, be a big achievement for him, his first title as a manager with that philosophy would be, would be massive for him. Absolutely. Well, we can hear from the man of the moment. He scored the winning penalty tonight to send Chelsea through to the final. Eden Hazard is with Paul. Many congratulations. A player of your quality deserves to be in a European final. Did you think it was going to happen? Uh, it was hard, but uh, yes, when you start a game, you think that you can reach the final, especially when you, when you draw the first game away. Uh, when you play the second game at home, you know, it's bit easy but uh, today was not I think we play a great game but uh, you know semi-final Europa League is, uh, is not is not so easy so 
at the end we won the penalties. We are just happy, and then we we will go to Baku to try to to win the trophy. Did you think you were the better team or not tonight overall? The first in the first half, yes, uh, and then always like this season we concede a goal after five minutes in the second half. So, but at the end we push. I think they create maybe one or two chances uh, in uh, in the game. We create more, but uh, I think it was 50-50 at the end. You know, penalties is just 50-50 uh, as well. So. Um, not the best game to play, but uh, at the end, you know, the character was good and we we go through, so we are happy. The best of finales, of course, Eden Hazard steps up to win it for Chelsea. We, well, we don't expect anything else, honestly. <laughs> it's penalty, you never know. Uh, but uh, I always take my responsibility, you know, when, uh, when I have to. So today I score, we won. I'm happy, the boys, they are happy, the fans, they are happy. So, but it's not finished. Uh, we have an, another game to play against Arsenal. So, you know, we against them we struggling a bit uh, last two three years. So we need to go there in Baku and uh, play with high quality and win the game. Of course, the season's not over, but many Chelsea fans will fear that that could be Eden Hazard for the last time at Stamford Bridge. Can you tell them anything? I don't think that, you know, I'm only thinking to win something for, for this club, for this squad. Uh, if it's my last game, I will try to do everything. If it's not, you know, I will see, you know, in my mind, I don't know yet. So I'm just thinking to, to win games. That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. It's been a joy. Thank you. <laughs> He's so likeable, Eden Hazard. Yeah. He's saying there, Glenn, he, he doesn't know if it is yeah. going to be his, his final home game here for Chelsea. Do you think it has any bearing on the, the club's decision, the fact that FIFA have, have rejected their mm -hmm. appeal um, to overturn their transfer ban so they can't sign players until the summer of 2020? Well, I'm sure it will it'll come into it, it, without a doubt. And it, it might work in Chelsea's favour for, for them to say to Hazard, look, we're under this situation you got to give us another year and um, I, I think he, he, he's played superbly well here for Chelsea and I think if he gets a chance he should move on individually. Personally I want to see him still playing the Premier League but I think he deserves the opportunity to go and, and play for a, a club like Real Madrid. Um, the fans will miss him but they've had great players like Zola and all sorts of great players here and replace them and they've got to do that again. If Hazard goes they've got to try and replace them. Um, somehow, but if they've got this transfer embargo, that's a major problem. It, but it might actually keep Hazard here. That might work in their favour. So uh, there's, there's swings and roundabouts for that decision. Yeah, it's difficult to know how it's going to pan out. They're not going to want to lose him for free next summer. And also, you feel that maybe that there is a bit of a, a feeling that they, they should let him go after everything that, that he's given the club. And, and if he wants to do that. Well, he's been an unbelievable servant to Chelsea Football Club. And I just think, boy, at 28 years old, having won virtually everything he could possibly win here, Chelsea probably away from Manchester City and Liverpool in terms of being the best in the Premier League. So normally when Real Madrid wants someone, they often get their man. We saw that with Cristiano Ronaldo as well. So um, it would be a shame to lose him to the Premier League, but I think he's earned the right to take that step if that opportunity is there for him. Yeah, he will be missed, not, not just by Chelsea fans, but by football fans and Premier League fans, if he, if he is to go. Uh, he scored the winning penalty for Chelsea this evening. They're through, and Arsenal were in Spain, the Europa League final, where they will face Arsenal. It took a penalty shootout. They won 4-3, a couple of big moments from Kepa in there, and the Blues are off to Baku. And you can see what it means to the fans here. It's been an up and down season, but the last couple of weeks have delivered top four. And now there is the potential still of silverware at the end of Maurizio Sarri's first season. It could be Hazard's final game here for Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. And what a way to bow out. And there's confirmation then of tonight's results. A big night for Arsenal in the Mestalla. They have beaten Valencia 4-2 on the night, 7-3 on aggregate. And as you can see, it's uh, finished 2-2 uh, on aggregate between Chelsea and Frankfurt. But the Blues through on pens. And for the first time, one country has produced all four finalists 
in the two European finals. It is a London derby, Chelsea against Arsenal, Wednesday the 29th of May from 7 o'clock on 2HD. I'm sure you will not want to miss that. More drama at the end of a, a fantastic week of European football, Owen. Brilliant. I mean, brilliant for the, for the English teams. I thought the Champions League was, was something we've probably never really seen before. And uh, great to see Chelsea and Arsenal in the Europa League final. Aubameyang with a hat-trick. You know, they actually blew Valencia away. So, uh, is that 29 goals for the season for Aubameyang? That's going to be uh, some final. Glenn, um, what, what a final to look forward to as yeah. well in, in Azerbaijan. It's a long way to go, but I'm sure the, the fans will already be trying to book their travel. <laughs> They'll be on the phone already, wouldn't they, tonight? Yeah. No, it's wonderful for English football, it really is. And you can only see them four clubs getting stronger as well, you know, adding to their squad for next season. So don't be surprised if we can, you know, have this a little bit, you know, finals will be full of English teams. Whether we get all four again next season, but let's celebrate this season. It's been wonderful. And they've done it the right way. All four teams should be proud of the way they've played. They really, you know, they, they, look, they look to attack. They've got really creative players in their teams. Chelsea weren't so good tonight. I've seen them play a lot better. But what a good sign. You're not playing at your best and you win the match. Yeah, by hook or by crook, you find a way. And it went to penalties, but, uh, you know, anything can happen with penalties. But Kepa has got, you know, you've got to give him a big pat on the back. Yeah. He, he did well tonight. He did his homework. And we, we thought, you know, there was a few times we thought that we were going to go straight down the middle with the centre-back. And he's read that. And that's crucial. It's crucial to do that at this stage now in the modern game. There's so much information there, and he's used that, and it's it's come up trumps for them. Did you think it wasn't going to be their night when Aspilicueta's penalty was saved by by Kevin Trapp? Well, you know, the response from the other players, the pressure builds up. Once you have a player miss it, the next penalty, whoever's going to take the next penalty, it's crucial. And that's where they come unstuck. That, you knew. That he, he was, was always missing him, wasn't he? He was going down the middle. I, I did shout it. I said, he's going down the middle. And Kepa had done his homework. Big centre-half come up. He'd had a great game as well uh, in Dorada. But it, this is the one. You just, we didn't Imagine quite he was brought on to take yeah, the penalty. Exactly. I mean, that's a good save as well. It really is. Yeah. He's, he's, and this is the last, probably the last kick maybe for Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. And kept his call. Cool, right man at the right time. Right decision to leave him to last as well in, in the penalty shoot. That would have been a... Eden's well, decision. Would it? Yeah, he would have said, I'll go, I'll go fifth. Yeah, I'll and go once fifth. you name them, that's it. You can't change them. Because we could have been sitting here saying, like, Hazard didn't even get to take a penalty. That wasn't me talking, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that was well in German. Um, so, if he didn't get a chance to take it because Aspila Quetta missed and blah, 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 they could have been gone. They could yeah. have been out. And you're thinking, well, Hazard hasn't even taken a, a penalty. But it worked absolutely spot on for him. It's them. almost like the script was written. Yeah. Really Another was. one. <laughs> Another one, exactly. Um, if we go back to, to extra time as well, there was a couple of big moments there where, where it could have been lost for Chelsea because David Luiz had to, had to clear one off the line and Zappa Costa as well. Well, Haller's just come back from injury and he, he needs, I think he's got a ton of goals this season. He pulls a real threat, just doesn't catch that one, comes off his studs. But credit the Chelsea defenders, you know, getting back into that on the line and clearing and this is this is Haller again. Free header, Zappa Costa is on the uh, it's on amazing. The post. I'd like to ask Zappa Costa, look, it's just instinct. He's not been told if you're on the back post, then the near post you can go back to the line. But I think he's just just instinct, something a gut feeling has told him, I'm going back onto the post here and he's become a saviour. Because, you know, normally it's the near post you go back onto. Yeah. If it goes over your head from the front shield, go onto them. Hey, it was brilliant defending. And he's a substitute, by the way. Yeah. He, wouldn't been, he wouldn't have been switched in before the game saying, hey, remember, you're going to go back on the post. Or whatever your job was, he's just reacted and, and uh, it, it, thank God he did. Well, we thought Gary Cahill was going to come on at one point, yeah. didn't we, when Christensen went off injured, but, but thankfully Zappacosta came on and, and was there to do that. If we go back to the first half, Owen, it really felt like it was going to be a lot more straightforward for Chelsea, didn't it, when Ruben Loftus-Cheek opened the scoring? Well, again, I thought when he was on the pitch, I thought he was Chelsea's best player, Ruben Loftus-Cheek. He was um, that driving force from midfield and the Chelsea fans weren't happy when he went off, but <laughs> this is what he gives you, Eden Hazard, moment of magic driving from midfield from Loftus cheek and you love that about him lovely composed finish but that's why he's in the side Loftus cheek he's mm -hmm. in terms of numbers he's getting goals and assists and you know he makes a terrific run in there Hinterrega doesn't get across but really cool and composed finish if he adds more goals to his game he's undroppable Loftus cheek he really is uh, I, I couldn't understand why he was taken off 
Kovacic. Fans weren't happy Kovacic at all. was on a yellow, mm. and he's not. Gonna, you needed a goal at that stage, and he, he ain't going to get you a goal. So the, the, why not? I've not. I've said it so many times. I would love the manager to look at Barkley and Loftus Cheek with probably Conte or a holding player, whoever he wants to sit in there with them. Let's see if the two young Englishmen can go and play and get more goals and chances. Give them, give them that. That opportunity, he never does. It's always working it around that one of them comes off, one goes. And for me, Loftus Cheek, if he's ever going to earn the fact to the manager and say, "Hey, hang on a minute, you need to be thinking about me as your number one midfield player," and that's what he's got to do. This, you know, the end of, you know, hopefully in the final and next season, and then we might see the very best of this kid, and then we can see him perhaps for an, in an England shirt again, doing his doing yeah. his things there because he is a talent. Yeah, showing that talent tonight. Sorry, I'm Absolutely. a bit happy No, no, it's, don't it's worry. My <laughs> I'm sure it does. Sure, I'm sure lots of fans agree with you as well, Glenn. Well, yeah, great, anything. cool finish from Ruben Loftus-Cheek in the first half, but it went to penalties after Jovic's equaliser in the second half. But Chelsea victorious in the penalty shoots out there. Star man Eden Hazard delivering the goods, and they're off to back. We'll have more reaction when we come back.